Hi, I am Letitia DeSouz. I am the founder of Elite Wealth Enterprises. I'm a mindset coach and a business strategist. I work with established entrepreneurs, C-level execs, and minority women in law. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about fear. I'm asked a lot from my clients, from people who know me, from people who don't, how I personally overcome fear. And I think if your goal is to overcome fear, you, you have a lot of work to do. For me, I don't look to overcome fear. I look to get through fear. There is almost never a time where I have a new challenge or a new opportunity or even something that I'm doing on a regular basis um, where I don't feel fear. Fear for me used to be crippling, like crippling to the point where I would have panic attacks, but I've learned that the way to get through it was to take action. Taking consistent action and then building momentum from the last action is the way that I get through fear. So when you shift the focus from getting, getting over the fear and know that fear is along for the ride and fear is along for the journey, you can just harness that fear and allow it to fuel you and just move towards whatever it is that you're looking to do. But if you're waiting for the day and for the time where you feel completely unafraid about something, you will more than likely be waiting for a very, very, very long time. Case in point, I recently started the Winning Mind podcast, and yes, that's a shameless plug. The producer had been reaching out to me periodically for about the last year after I guessed it on another podcast that he produces, and he said, the world needs to hear you, and he, he kept seeding the idea of the podcast. My fear, I was afraid of the responsibility, and I was afraid of the commitment. I was afraid of... Who's going to listen? What am I going to say? I don't know anything about podcasting. I don't even listen to podcasts that often because I'm a visual learner. Um, but one day I just, I messaged him and I said, let's do it. Let's start it in February. I'm going to commit to doing it. And do you know, the first episode that I recorded, I was terrified. Do you know the second episode that I recorded? I was terrified. Do you know the episode that I recorded last week? I felt the same fear. So the fear is just not stopping me. I just do it and I persist in spite of the fear. And the more that you persist through something in spite of fear, the more inner resilience that you build, the more self-trust you build, knowing that whatever happens, you can handle it with grace and ease. I didn't know what the feedback would be. I didn't know if people would listen, if they would like it. But when I just moved through all of those things and took the action, it all worked out as it needed to. The other part of that is if you want to minimize fear, it's not making things mean something about you personally. So, so often our identities are tied into other people's opinions and results and all of these, these other things. So when something does not go as planned, or even when it does go as planned, it means something about us personally. So if your self-esteem and your identity is wrapped into things going well or things not going well, you will constantly be on this emotional roller coaster as opposed to having self-worth and self-esteem that is separate from what it is that you do. And so you're not moved and you're not shaken as easily when, when things go well or when things don't. Of course you want things to go well, but if they don't go well, you can pivot and you can figure it out. Um, and that was a huge learning lesson for me is that I had too much invested in the results. I had too much invested in what people would think or what people would say. So when I started to pull back that power, if you will, from other people's opinions, it got a lot easier because success or failure, they don't many mean anything about me as a person. So I'm a lot more detached from the outcomes. Um, another way that you can minimize fear is just by taking action, even if it's a baby step. 
Go boldly in the direction of your baby step and then take the next step. You only need to know the next step. So often we're focused on the whole plan and the results and the outcome before we've taken the, before we've taken the first step. If you take the first step, then you only need the next step. Then you only need the next step and before you know it, you've taken so many steps and you've gotten so much closer to your goal. So don't put so much pressure on yourself to be on the 15th step. And you're in anxiety thinking about what's gonna happen way at the 15th step when you haven't taken the first step. Just go step by step by step and don't let your foot off the gas until you get to the goal, okay? That's, that's another thing is, don't stop stopping yourself. That's the best way to say it because when you stop, most of us don't feel we stop. So when you stop and then you have to start all over again, you kind of start dealing with the same level of fear, if not more, that you had in the first place. So minimizing fear is taking action, not making it mean anything about you personally. And the other thing that I would say is, um, hmm, I would say those two things primarily. I would say that most days I don't know that I'm motivated or driven or that that has to be the case. The first thing that I would say at the top of the list is my self-care. So self-care is so crucial. In the world of entrepreneurships, you're always solving problems. You're always thinking through something. So taking care of yourself, making sure that you're well rested, well fed, um, that you're eating well, that you're sleeping and resting well, that you're pouring into yourself, you know, prayer for me, working out, like all of those things are a huge part of what allows me to develop the fuel to keep going and to honor the commitments that I've made. The second part of that is the commitments that I've made trump the feelings that I have because uh, many days, I'm not feeling it, and I don't feel like it, but I've made commitments to the people that I serve, and I've made commitments to myself, and so in choosing to lead my heart, instead of allowing my heart to lead me based on those commitments, I show up and serve because it's what I've committed to do. The last thing that I would say about that, and these are no in partic not necessarily in particular order, but doing work that you love and working with people that you love, for me, is huge. The intrinsic nature of something, it, it needs to be something that's near and dear to me. If I don't love it, I'm, I'm not going to have the stick to 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 do it. I'm just not going to. So as a coach, I do work that I love. I work with people that I love. And that makes the work, even though it's challenging work, it makes it so rewarding and so fulfilling. And so even though I don't always feel like showing up just because of life, right? Um, I do because I'm, I'm doing work that I love with people that I love and that means so much. And that I think is, is how I've become successful at it. And success is actually something that is subjective. Success for me, personally, in its, in its most simplistic form is doing the thing that I was put here by God to do, fulfilling my purpose. It's taken a lot of inner work, a lot of juicy twists and turns in my life to discover that, but my purpose is to help other people find their purpose, to, to help disrupt the thought patterns and the mindsets that, that create blind spots in the lives of people that get them stuck and, 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 and get them stagnant in life and in business. That is my job. And so ultimately they create lives that they love, they create businesses that they love, and they create legacies with intention. And me having my life print, my fingerprint on that, having done that for thousands of people, I know I'll do it for hundreds of thousands, I know I'll do it for millions. That is my purpose. And everything that comes along with that, the money, the rewards, the opportunities, that is just the byproduct of being in purpose and living on purpose.